It was a rivalry filled weekend for New Mexico State Athletics and the Aggies came away on top. We've got the highlights from last Saturday's Battle of I-10 and head men's basketball coach Marvin Menzies will join me to discuss his team's victory over rival UTEP. Coach and I will also look ahead to this weekend's game at Oral Roberts. With the season fully wrapped up for Aggie Volleyball, we sit down with head coach Mike Jordan one final time to recap his team's 17-win season and look ahead to next year. After an emotional win against I-25 rival UNM, we'll be joined by head women's basketball coach Mark Trapp to review the Rio Grande rivalry. It's a great day to be an Aggie. This is New Mexico State Sports Weekly. Great to have you with us on New Mexico State Sports Weekly. I'm your host, Adam Young. The Aggie men's basketball team just faced off against the UTEP Miners in the Battle of I-10 right here in Las Cruces. Without three key players due to injury, including star guard Daniel Mullings, the Aggies came back from a nine-point second-half deficit and picked up a gutsy 71-64 win against UTEP. The win gave the Aggies a season split with the Miners in El Paso and Las Cruces. Let's take a look at the highlights from Saturday's game at the Pan American Center. Large crowd at the Pan Am for this I-10 rivalry as the Aggies look for a season split with the Miners. Coach Menjis looking for his team's fourth win of the season. First half action, UTEP's Cedric Lang is swatted away by Aggie freshman Pascal Siakam, one of five blocks on the evening for Pascal. However, Lang returns the favor. He sends this one towards the bench. That was a layup attempt there by Ian Baker and UTEP's defense holding strong early. UTEP would go ice cold from the field in the first half. However, they get one right here. Irvin Morris will lay one in around Pascal Siakam. For the Miners, it was a back and forth first half in Las Cruces. The Aggies looking for some elevated play from senior Remy Berry. Leading the Aggies in scoring so far this season, he needed to step up, and boy, did he really step up in this one. Right here, he hits his only three of the ball game, a team-high 15 points, also a game-high for Remy Berry in this one. The game was tied 35 apiece at halftime. The Aggies trying to pull away in half number two. Remy Berry once again blows by his defender, Cedric Lang, all the way to the hoop, the end one for Remy Berry. He would make the free throw. The Aggies went 25 of 30 from the free throw line for the ball game. Omega Harris answers with a triple for UTEP, one of only two trays in half number two for the Miners. A big crowd on hand, 9,000 on hand. Student section really into it, a great atmosphere at the Pan American Center. A lot to cheer about as well. Here's a dunk in transition for Pascal Siakam. The Aggies went on a 17 to four second half run. Siakam down low, the hook shot, one of his six field goals in this one, 12 points in the night for Pascal Siakam. The Aggie bench loving the second half energy. Siakam was a monster down low defensively. Another block for Pascal Siakam. The freshman from Cameroon, a monster game for him. A lot of the fans excited about the future for Pascal Siakam. However, he did foul out of the game. Here, CJ Cooper scores as he bounces off of Siakam. Siakam fouls out right there, and UTEP hanging in the game late after trailing by double figures. Here's Irvin Morris. Hits the close shot to keep UTEP alive late in the ball game. However, the Aggies would try to seal it right here. DK Eldridge cherry picks, he leaks out, and this is the dagger, folks. Eldridge with a dunk. DK had 14 points for the ball game, and the Aggies pick up a monster win, a 71-64 win against rival UTEP in Las Cruces. Final stats for you, the Aggies only shot 40% from the field for the ball game. New Mexico State very efficient though from three, 57% from three, and they were 83%, 25 of 30 from the charity line. 15 points, a game high for Remy Berry, 12 for Siakam, and 14 for DK Eldridge. For the Miners, they had 12 points from Lang and also 12 points from CJ Cooper. The Miners struggled from three. They were three of 10 from three, 42% for the field, and the Aggies pick up a season split against UTEP. When we return, 
Head men's basketball coach Marvin Menzies will join me. He'll recap his team's hard-fought victory in the Battle of I-10 and also look ahead to his team's upcoming road games at Oral Roberts and Baylor. Stay tuned. This is New Mexico State Sports Weekly. Welcome back to New Mexico State Sports Weekly. The New Mexico State New men's basketball team came into their matchup with rival UTEP a little short-handed last weekend. Injuries to key players Tanvir Bular, Chile Napawe, and WAC preseason player of the year Daniel Mullings made the Aggie bench a little shorter, but didn't crush their chances of defeating the Miners. With a mix of veterans and youngsters stepping up to fill in, the Aggies came away with a 71-64 win in front of a big crowd at the Pan American Center. Joining me now is head men's basketball coach Marvin Menzies. Coach, with everything your team is going through injury-wise, right. did that make this win really impressive for your team? It did. It did. You know, obviously, your uh, your back's against the wall. You know, you got your stars out of the game, and four out of our top seven, I think, when we started in August, were, <laughs> were not yeah. available. So if you'd have told me we were going to pull that one off, honestly, I just said, That'll, that'll, I'll take that win, you know, if we can get it done, obviously. So, um, but, you know, the great thing about it, though, Adam, was I thought all the guys really uh, had great chemistry mm -hmm. and, and in the locker room going into it, the practices before going into it. And I was, we're going to play well. I knew we were going to play well. I didn't know if we were going to win or not, to be mm -hmm. quite honest, but I, I was happy with, with the verdict, obviously. Which player stepped up more than usual to fill the void? You know what? It's interesting. As I, after I went back and watched tape, uh, you know, you're so excited after a win anyway, right? Yeah. So then you go back and you watch tape and you go, dang, they, they made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> you know, the younger guys that I, you know, I looked at uh, Braxton made some big shots. Uh, you know, Matt did some good things offensively and, and uh, 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 Jalen as well. Uh, Pascal was, was big time. You know, even Jonathan. Jonathan was 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 very um, engaging in the post. So all of them really, it was a collective effort. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there was anyone. Maybe Pascal, you know, kind of uh, uh, had a had a little edge on some of the other guys. But all of them did some really good things. But then when you go and watch tape, you go, Gosh, we could be so much better still, mm -hmm. based off of you know the things that 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 I think they are very correctable too. So that's what gives you hope. You know, you go, Well, we got the win, which is great, and 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 the young guys stepped up. But then I go, I say, but I go, man, and we could, you know, we could really get this thing, you know, really, really exciting around here real soon. So I'm, we're feeling good right now. A lot of people around town are talking about Pascal Siakam and the play against yeah. UTEP. Mm -hmm. Where's his upside? How high is it? You know, it, it, it really is sky's the limit. I'm going to tell you why. Because he's only been playing organized basketball. This might be his first real season of organized, truly organized basketball, you know. Um, I know, you know, he's been playing for a couple of years, but nothing, nothing to the point where you could say, hey, he's getting, you know, true development and coaching and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. He got a little bit in high school, but not much. Um, so to answer your question, I, I think he's, you know, I think he's an NBA kid, you know, uh, down the road. If, if he's such a sponge, he's a three, six student, um, great kid, great family. You know, he's got basketball in his blood in terms of, you know, his, his brother plays at Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. He has another brother that played, I think, as well. So, so they, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's really, really high. And so I just don't want to screw it up. So if he doesn't make it, <laughs> it'll probably be on me. So I got to make sure I get him there. Is gutsy a good way to describe this win? It is. A uh, great adjective to, to, to you know, kind of put it all in, in a capsule because we only shot, I think it was like 38 or 39% mm -hmm. or something like that from the floor. Um, but we made free throws at like a high clip, uh, 80 something percent. Mm -hmm. We we um, defended our tails off, and that was another major you know factor for the win. So when you looked at the stat sheet, you said, "Well, how did they win this game?" So <laughs> gutsy's probably the best way. If they had a gutsy stat, they should throw that on there. We had like a 98 on the <laughs> gutsy stat. So yeah, I'd agree. When we return, Coach and I will look ahead to his team's upcoming road game at Oral Roberts. Stay tuned, this is New Mexico State Sports Weekly. Your Aggie men's basketball team has won three of their last five games, and their rigorous early season schedule continues this weekend when they travel to Tulsa to take on Oral Roberts. Here with me in studio is head coach Marvin Menzies, a tough Tulsa team, or I should say a tough Oral Roberts tough team, team on the road coach. Mm -hmm. How tough will this game be? Well. You know, we, uh, we have a team that we're going against that we don't know really, really well. Uh, we, it's not like we've ever played them before. 
We don't, uh, the game that I got ready to go watch was, was uh, postponed or mm -hmm. canceled or something. So because there, I guess there was a power outage. Uh, so I'm gonna sit down and, and, and watch some more film on them, obviously. Um, we, we caught a couple games uh, early on, but I don't really know a lot about them, to be quite honest. But I will by the time we lace them up and all our kills with kids will as well. We had finals this week and, uh, you know, so that, that was another reason I gave the guys a couple days off. But uh, we'll hone in on them. And I, and I, and I know, with, you know, Coach Sutton does a great job over there. And, and, I, and I'm looking forward to, to traveling back to Tulsa, which we've been to before. You've had some close games on the road so far this year. How tough is it to win on the road? Well, it is extremely tough to win on the road. Uh, matter of fact, we can't win on the road. <laughs> As to point to this point, uh, you know, n not having a win in this season, this season on the road, um, I think gives us a little extra, you mm -hmm. know, uh, motivation. Um, obviously, when you don't have a uh, familiarity with the team, you don't play them on a regular basis. There's no real tradition and history there. Well, what's your driving force? Well, to win the game, right? Mm -hmm. But then you look and you say, well, we haven't won one this season on the road, so now you got a little extra motivation. So I'm hoping that, uh, accompanied with you know the UTEP win um, at home, and and just to, to get us a little, you know, um, you know, I don't know if the word synergy or or you know, uh, just just to get us going. You, you know, one, two, three on the road. Uh, I think it makes a huge difference for for your confidence when you get into conference. Do you feel like these tough road assignments, though, can make you better down the road? You, you know, you, you hope so. I mean, in theory, that's, that's the way it's supposed to work, right? I mean, uh, when you play well, I think, you know, we got beat so bad at, at, uh, in Albuquerque that, you know, I think that kind of took the wind out of our sails a little bit. But then we came back and took, a care, took care of business at the house. So you say, OK, well, we're back on the road again now. So with the way we played at Wyoming and Wichita State and St. Mary's, you know, you look at and at, at UTEP, you, you go, you know, we're, we're close, we're close, but we got to get one. We got to get one. So, you know, hopefully this will be the one. And then uh, and then we got a tough team in Baylor mm -hmm. uh, after that. And uh, then we got a couple of really tough teams at the house still, too, with uh, Irvine and Colorado State. And so it doesn't get much easier from here. So every, every game is going to be a battle, which is great, which is what you want. And I, I think to your to your question, yes, th those are the type of games that you need in order to have some uh, success down the road. Log on to nmstatesports.com to keep up with your Aggie men's basketball team when they take on Oral Roberts this Saturday and then Baylor next Wednesday. Coach, we appreciate it. Thanks, Adam. After the break, we'll be joined by head volleyball coach Mike Jordan. The Aggie volleyball team finished off their season by defeating the UTEP Miners on their home court. Coach and I will look back at 2014 when we come back on New Mexico State Sports Weekly. The New Mexico State Volleyball team wrapped up their season on a high note by sweeping I-10 rival UTEP in El Paso, concluding their season at 17 and 11. This marks the 14th straight season with a winning record and the 16th straight season. The Aggies have racked up over 15 wins. Here with me now is head coach Mike Jordan. Coach, season in the books. Have you had a chance to sit back and reflect yet? Absolutely. Uh, that starts happening right away. You know, you start thinking about all the things you did right mm -hmm. and all the things you did wrong and uh, where you're going to go from here. And we've done that as a staff, sat down, made some plans and uh, looking forward to the break and then getting after it again. What's the schedule like as you move forward to spring practice? Well, once uh, once they get back for second semester, we're in uh, an individual's phase, mm -hmm. we call it. Uh, the NCAA allows us two hours a week of volleyball. Uh, but then they'll be in strength and conditioning as well, uh, and our strength coaches do a great job. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll do skills work, uh, usually by position, in small groups a couple times a week. And then uh, right around the beginning of March, we'll hit team practice again, just like the fall. Mm -hmm. And we get four competition dates as well, which is great. Uh, we'll go out and play some tournaments with other college teams. And uh, it's a great opportunity for us to experiment with lineups, uh, give people opportunities to play in a competitive setting, but obviously yeah. something that doesn't count on your one loss record. Do you have a good idea of what you'll have next year? We do, and we're excited about it. Uh, I think the big questions right now, Adam, are what are we going to do with Gwen Murphy? Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously the setting position with Natalie being able to set a little bit, will she continue to grow into that position? Will we keep her on the right side? With Gwen, will we make her an outside hitter? I'm leaning toward yes. Uh, I think we need that big cannon out there on the outside, and uh, it'll make us a lot better. You have a really good recruiting class coming in. 
do you feel like a lot of those players can step in and contribute right away? They can. Uh, we're also hopeful that they won't have to. That's, mm -hmm. that's the key. With freshmen, if, if they have to play, you want to be able to minimize their responsibilities a little bit. Uh, hopefully they can just do the things they're good at already. But Bryn Popovich has a great arm. She's versatile enough to play on either antenna. Uh, I don't think her ball control is where it needs to be, but uh, she could help right away just from a blocking and attacking standpoint, no question. Megan Hart at six foot four uh, allows us the opportunity possibly to move Gwen outside. Uh, Megan's got pretty good feet and a long reach, and I think she's a long way from being a great attacker at this level still, but as a blocker, I think she can have an impact pretty quick. Another good season with 17 wins, but you want to make yeah. the NCAA tournament. Yeah. Can your players use that as motivation here in the offseason? They better. Uh, it is motivation for us, certainly. We're, we're accustomed to getting to the tournament. Uh, we're accustomed to 20 wins, not 17. And, and uh, we'll, we'll hold it over their head a little bit and try and get them back on track. Excited to get back going again? No doubt. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to holidays and a little bit of downtime. I'm sure all everybody mm -hmm. is. You know, you need to rest the body and the brain a little bit. And, uh, but once January kicks back up and the semester starts, uh, uh, we'll be preparing for next year. Coach, we appreciate your time all season. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate it. After the break, head women's basketball coach Mark Track will join me. He'll break down the major win over I-25 rival UNM this past Sunday. The win against the Lobos was the Aggies' first since 07. Coach Track is with us when we come back. This is New Mexico State Sports Weekly. <laughs> The New Mexico State women's basketball team forced 25 turnovers and received 23 points from guard Sasha Weber en route to a convincing 70-59 win against I-25 rival New Mexico last Sunday. It was the 73rd all-time meeting in the Rio Grande rivalry, and the Aggies picked up their first win against the Lobos since 07. Joining me in studio to talk about the win is head coach Mark Track. Coach, how much does this win mean for your program? You know, it means a lot. We haven't beaten them since 2007, and it was a big win, and it's a big rivalry win, and we had a big buildup uh, into the game. You know, we had different motivational mm -hmm. sayings up on, on the boards, different things that uh, that have transpired in the rivalry. But at the same time, it's a win, and, 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 and uh, we move on, and hopefully we can uh, continue uh, our newfound intensity and defensive play. And, you know, I, I, I read an account in the Albuquerque Journal where uh, our kids were, were taking – team pictures on the court because they were so they weren't taking team pictures because of the win they were taking team pictures because they were doing it for kids who were at the game we had an autograph session so it was a big win but it wasn't that big of a win. Sure. you take team pictures after a national championship so it was a big win and 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 we're, we're happy about it but you know what today's a new day we got to start thinking about our next game and start preparing for the next game uh, but I'm not going to say last night that uh, that it wasn't fun celebrating that victory you forced 25 turnovers against the Lobos. What made your defense so good? I think they just played hard. Our, our athletes finally were athletic. You know, they, they, they played really, really hard. And if we play hard, we're going to be okay. We're a bit undersized. We have big guards. We're small inside. Uh, we're a bit undersized. But uh, if we play hard, use our athletic ability, if Mariah Mack and uh, Tamara Williams and uh, Shanice Davis, if they all use their athletic and just play as hard as they can, you know, Cassandra Harris, you know, we, we could be really, really good, you know, but they've just got to play hard all the time. And I think we extended our defense, you know, we tried to disrupt them a bit and, and uh, we did a good job. Now the key is, can we continue to play this hard every day in practice and in every game? We'll see. A pair of 23 point games last week for Sasha Weber, your junior guard. How special was her week? Sasha was outstanding. Sasha is a, is a big guard. She's strong. She never gets knocked off the ball. Really good three-point shooter. You know, her, her, her defense has really come on in the past couple of weeks. I mean, we challenged her a couple of weeks ago. I didn't think she was playing. Uh, and I'm sorry, I, I saw the tapes. She was not playing uh, mm -hmm. uh, up to Sasha. She was playing average. She wasn't bad. She was average, and she wasn't up to Sasha's standards. So we really just said, hey, you got to step it up. You know, you got to. Um, you're one of the best players in conference, and I'll tell you what, she really, really has. She stepped it up in all aspects of the game. She's a great all-around player, and we've set the bar high for her. I'm really excited for her. She's really worked hard to see it pay off the next few games, and now going forward, we expect that from her every game. You know, Sasha should be an almost double-double, but she should be a 12 to 23-point score um, every game, but... Uh, and she will be, and I'm really, you know, like I said, we challenged her, set the bar high, and she's reaching it, and I think she'll do that the rest of the year. I really, really love coaching that kid. Two wins last week, Coach. Do you feel like everything's heading in the right direction now? 
Uh, you know, it remains to be seen. We're a young team. I mean, we can't show up in our next game now and, and you know, not play hard. You know, we, we, did, we missed very few assignments uh, yesterday. We, 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 we were in tune to a game plan for 40 minutes, which has been a struggle for the last two years of such a young, you know, young team. Uh, but we were in tune to the game plan for 40 minutes. We recognized, uh, pl we had player recognition on the floor, who can shoot, who can't shoot, who we back off of, who we have to go out and close out on. And for the first time for 40 minutes, that really, really happened. And I think they were so into this New Mexico, uh, New Mexico I mean, uh, to see the emotion and the energy, you know, I just, you, you just got to tell them, you, you know, this was not the national championship mm -hmm. yesterday. The game's not over. You got to do that every game for the next 20 games. And if we could do that, I think I think we're okay. I think the future looks bright. Come out to the Pan Am Center this Sunday when your Aggies take on North Dakota State. Tip off is set for 2 p.m. Coach, best of luck on Sunday. Thank you. Season tickets for men's and women's basketball are now on sale. To be part of the excitement, call the Aggie ticket office at 575-646-1420. You can also get your tickets online at nmstatesports.com or ticketmaster.com. That will do it for this week's installment of New Mexico State Sports Weekly. I'm Adam Young saying thank you for watching and go Aggies.